What's up guys? This is Kevin Imamura. I currently work for Nike Skateboarding. I've been with Nike SB since 2002, pretty much when we started. Before that I worked at Transworld and I did a magazine called Stance and a magazine called Warp before that. Um, today we will be looking at all the different things that I've collected over the years that have to do with this wonderful thing that we call skateboarding. Let's look at some skateboards. Ooh boy. Schroeder. Whenever we signed somebody new on SB, I always like wanted one of their boards and we put them on the wall in the office. Stencil, stencil grip tape art. Another Schroeder, Rip Grip, D-Way, Shotgun, Everslick. It's good shape. Schmidt Sticks, Chris Miller. So this was actually one of my first like modern skateboards. Cause I actually have, first skateboards that I stood on were like, my uncles and grandparents that were like wood with clay wheels. But this was a Volterra that a friend of mine cut down into a freestyle shape. A lot of, uh, a lot of time spent on this thing, trying to figure out how to ollie. This one still has rails on it. I think I used the same set of rails for probably like four years. Ooh. So, at one point, I was like, I want the biggest nose possible. So it came with those, and then I drilled it back even further. But, pff, fucking not as dude. Dressing, big on dressing. Why I had tracker stickers on there? No idea. But I am stoked to have the No Mercy sticker. Fuck yeah, dude. This is not an old board. Well, it is an old board, but this was a board that I went around the world with when we did a, uh, Nothing But The Truth, the premiere tour. So all those cities with this board. No idea what these are. Ooh wee, okay. These are not old, but they are definitely gems. Michael Leone at his finest with the medallions. You guys know where this graphic came from? Hawkwind, it's an album cover. <laughs> the magic scarf. And I think this just kind of goes to show like where my head was at, but like aside from the Nautis and the uh, dressing boards, all vert dudes, let's dive into some clothes. <laughs> these are golden. So these are original Plan B pants that I wore probably back in like 92. And I'm five foot seven, about 130 pounds back then, probably like buck 15 why on earth I would be wearing XL pants. Well, who knows, who knows why, but uh, yeah, pretty good. Notice the taper, that's totally ridiculous. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay, so some t-shirts. Actually, he just posted something about this recently, but um, Eric Brunetti of Fucked fame also did some graphics for 101, Dorothy's Fortress little kind of sub-brand of fucked at the time. Keegan Sauter, Zero. Beloved Canadian writer, the uh, Thunder Crotch. Blue, uh, is that Dune and Jay Lee before pre-stereo? OG Ray Barbie. This one has got, uh, I don't know if that's mold or what, but uh, Mike Conroy, SMA. Super sick graphic. Keith Meek. Slasher graphic. Uh, this is a good one. So, pre element, underworld element. This is uh, Julian Stranger's graphic, AKA Julie Strange, I think was what the graphic says. But that's all Andy Howell artwork. Love the uh, Sky Pager video. SMA. This is a good one. Alan Peterson. Lest we forget the power of his ollies. I do not. Skate Rock, Thrasher, don't know if they still do that. Probably the best Thrasher graphic. Well, one of. Alva, old stale negative. <laughs> Let's do some more vintage ones before we get into current stuff. SMA Rocco Division. Silk screen's a little beat up, but this was a favorite. There was a lot of Winnie the Pooh stuff going on at the time, and this was definitely a good one. Got it in two colors. This one got fucked up with a stain, but still a great shirt. This one 
Mr. K Grind himself, Dan Paterka, Charlie Brown graphic, Lance Mountain guest art, Crooked. This is a bootleg. Love bootleg shirts, by the way. Deer skateboarding? Is that who's doing this? Mm -hmm. APB. Screaming Shaka. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, this, Todd Bratchwood. Bell and Sebastian meets uh, Bad Brains, Band in DC. Uh, and this was made by Jurgen out in uh, Germany when we did the uh, first version of the Made for Skate book. So this was when we launched Omar Salazar's signature shoe in uh, San Francisco. Welcome to Outer Space. That was a show that we did up in SF, Shrine Builder and Earthless. This was a uh, Nike SB European tour, Bird is the Word. Uh, UXA, I guess we can call it a short-lived brand. I mean, I don't think they're doing it anymore, but Jefferson Pang, Peter BC, and uh, Peter Wynn. Ooh, gold right there. This is a members only jacket that we did. This had to have been like 03 or 04 with Nike SB. Instead of members only, it is sneakers only. And the inside is a paisley print that we did that's basically, it's all parts of the dunk. We did all kinds of gear like this that honestly, I don't even remember if we sold it or not. I mean, some of this stuff just ended up being promo only. Okay, here we go. Original Bones jacket. So that was 88 maybe, 87. I don't know, not too long after I started skating. No idea where the stain came from. That's a bummer. But Stesic graphic and font. Gotta love that. Bag of Suck from the premiere. Lakai shirt. I don't know who ended up giving this to me, but uh, Morrissey homage there. Color Magazine. Okay. RIP Color. Shout out to those dudes. Quality print publication. This is uh, Eli Reed's very short-lived brand, but this is probably one of the best graphics ever. Christopher Walken from The Deer Hunter. So sick. Uh, reissue, Debo, Klansman graphic, another best one ever. Some more like Lance graphics that did for us. BA, Lance, doing Lance. Pink Motel, that was an ad that we shot when he did uh, Blazer. This was a graphic that Lance did uh, for Skate Park of Tampa. Did all these little doughboys, which we ended up doing a shoe that had a repeat of all of these. So there was a dunk to go along with this. Mr. Eric Costin, the Fandangle, and another Lance graphic. So this is one of the few shots that Grant had of Lance in Air Jordan 1s. And uh, we did a small collection with him. Probably one of my proudest moments, getting him on the team. One of the many Rosa Libre shirts that I have, another shout out to Michael Leon. Man, talk about like some of the best graphics, amazing shit. Trans World shirt. This is one that I get asked about all the time when I wear it. So this was a spot Polaroid shirt. This was uh, Gons. Gons doing his interpretation of the blind graphics, which were the interpretation of the original Powell. So two times removed, if that makes sense. Let's look at some zines. I would be very hesitant to call fluff a zine, but um, what Marcel Veldman does with his publication is just outstanding. For those of you that don't know, it is a magazine out of Europe, Holland specifically. Every single issue is a different format. So he's done jigsaw puzzles, posters, he's done tabloids, anything that you could think of. They're incredible. But this is one, it's called 1826, and that is the amount of pages, which Anyone that has ever tried to do a magazine knows how utterly ridiculous that is. But this is a hardcover book. I'm sure he has other people contributing, but it's mostly his stuff. You got all the, all the hot European rippers that everybody knows about today. They all got photos on here. When he does these, like they are truly things to behold. Amazing stuff. All his photos, super sick. More from the land of Europe. 15 Years of Lockwood, another great book with a quote from Gino to open it up. Most of this stuff is just kind of knick-knacky, but 
So this was the very first catalog that we made for Nike SB before we even were called Nike SB. The only identifier about Nike SB was on the box logo, uh, which didn't have the actual Nike SB logo, it just was Nike Air. Some of our very first product, URL, photo of Gino, EQ. This would have been 2003, because this stuff came out in March of 2003. Salvatore Iannucci, 1965, Gino's dad. I think it's his dad, maybe it's his uncle. Mr. Forbes, another catalog. So this one came out around the time of that uh, sneakers only jacket that I was showing you guys. Mr. Daniel Shimizu. Pretty funny to see Daniel skating in dunks. Supreme Dunk High. Uh, these colors were done by the late, great Sandy Bodecker. And that, the Ghost Olive, is probably one of my favorite dunks of all time. The first 420 dunks, all hemp. EQ, colorway done by yours truly. I think I have a pair somewhere. Uh, and this was the Angus that we did that had the Paps Blue Ribbon logo on the back, except it said Nike SB. Paps Blue Ribbon found out about it and we had to destroy all these shoes. But the other one, like one of the more famous ones was the Freddy Krueger dunk. The whole thing was made to look like Freddy Krueger's gear and it had blood splatter on it. That was actually a uh, Todd Bradford shoe. That one, Keenan Milton, RIP, sick chocolate wallet, 43. Great magazine. Magazines were just all around me and part of my life. If you would ask me as a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? Work in a magazine. If you tell me you've got a zine, I'm interested. One of the other awesome things that we do at SB is we put together our own zines. This is for the launch of Grant Taylor's Blazer, which I was working on at the time. The video that accompanies this is also super sick. That was done by Benny. Primitive Encore book. They were handing these out at the premiere. Chat, BA ad that I think I pulled out of Vice Magazine. Uh, some art sent by the one and only John McGuire out in Milwaukee. Deconstruct, Jason Dilzine. Of course, the first photo that I open up to is somebody's crotch. So Alien Workshop, Memory Screen. Somebody made a zine, everything that we know about it. Little factoids, ads. I mean, I have no idea how many copies that they made of this thing. Chrome Ball interview, Dwayne Petrie. They did a screening of it in 2014. And so there's an interview with Chris Carter and Dwayne Petrie. So that must've been the impetus for doing this thing. There, Patrick O'Dell. When you based Gummo in Xenia, is that a reference to Alien Workshop PO Box in Memory Screen? Harmony Corinne. Yes, totally. That's exactly what it was. Nothing but the truth some commemorative token that we made. And I will say nothing more about that because a book will be written at some point about that project. More land stuff, business cards, Transworld Media, YMCA Skate Park in Encinitas. A little pin from Omar Salazar's launch party. Heel Bruise, Richard Mulder, gone but not forgotten. Little AJ1 keychain, numbers, Club Mumble. I think that's uh, Bob Kronbauer uh, up in Canada. Josh, the shrine. <laughs> Very appropriate, I'd say. Not the sock company. This was a magazine that was around from 99, 2000 to 2002. This is what we wore at Louis Marnell's funeral. So RIP Louis Marnell. Stickers. A plethora of OG Plan B stickers. Sanchez, Javante, Getaway, Jason Jesse, Zero Sophisto. So this was all, maybe it was around the same time as Underworld Element. Yeah, more Andy Howell. These are just, this is some new stuff, but oh, there you go. Oh yeah, here we go. Some strange notes, Streets of Fire outtake. Roscop on a BMX bike doing a follow cam. Super sick photo. Oh yeah, first issue of Slap. You know what's fucked up about this? I didn't buy it for the cover. It's what I should have bought it for. No, I bought this because of this. Tobin Yellen photo of Cardiel doing a backside 180 at the Gons Gap. That sequence like blew my mind. That was worth the price of admission. Um, well, so I've been at SB since July of 2002. Stuff that I keep, either shoes that I worked on personally or stuff that has like, I don't know, just good memories. This is a good one. This is one that everybody knows and still talks about. So the denims, those are the uh, one of the Reese Forbes colorway. 
I guess he worked on with Nottis for this one. This actually came out like right before I started at SB. Uh, let's see, what the dunk? So this came out with, um, when, we, when we launched Nothing But The Truth. Um, but this was definitely one of the craziest shoes that we've ever done. So completely mismatched, but they take elements from about two dozen of our most famous shoes up to this point when the movie came out in 2007. But yeah, we had to build this shoe special because this is definitely not how we normally would make a regular dunk. First time that we actually got to do an official Nike SB and Jordan collab, uh, working with Stesic and Lance on these shoes. That was a big deal at the time. Big deal for me, big deal for a lot of people, I think. So these are the Stesic joints, his graphic across the back and on the inside. These were the Lance ones. So these are the ones that are mismatched underneath. So one's blue and one is red underneath. And we also did a white one. Same thing. Paint comes off and you can see it. But yeah, these were these are definitely a big deal for me. One, because the Jordan one was arguably my first skate shoe. I actually had vans before that, but I was actually racing BMX and riding bikes in my vans. But then after Animal Chin came out and I saw the Jordan ones, it was kind of all over. It was a big deal for me, not just because it was like my first skate shoe, but also just working with dudes that I look up to so much. Stesic and Lance, like definitely people that I wouldn't be skateboarding. I shouldn't say I wouldn't be skateboarding. I would be skateboarding regardless of them, but for their overall contribution to skateboarding, those dudes, they are pretty much it. It just kind of goes to show how big Nike is where like there's all these different categories and they all operate in their own separate universes. And so Jordan is one of the biggest and it's definitely something where you got to get permission. You got to like work through a lot of hoops to make something like that happen. So yeah, it was a big deal. So we did these and then we didn't do another one for years. And then just recently we started doing them again. Uh, let's see. This is another one that I was definitely psyched on that very happy that I got it to work on uh, the Gato. So originally a soccer shoe. Uh, this is actually the Supreme version of it, but I was just a super big fan of skating in soccer shoes. It's pretty much exclusively what I skated in for many years. This is a good one. So this is a collab that we did with uh, the guys from Made for Skate in Germany. That one in the book is very prominently featured a Hobie shoe. And so they wanted to do blazer in the same colorway, but these were promo only. And I think we only made like 50 or 75 of these. Pretty serious toe cap. First colorway, Grant Taylor shoe, army green. That was Grant's request. He wanted an army green shoe. Another one that I was very proud to work on. Stoked for Grant. This is another Stesic collab. So Lance wore these in an ad. It's got the Stesic skull in the back. We actually, we did a zine and a movie for this that John Humphreys worked on. I don't know why I don't have a copy of the zine. I'm sure I have copies of it at work. So this was a shoe that we did with Gino. Uh, not his colorway, but challenge court. So this is the one where there was an ad with uh, Gino and John McEnroe. Not again, not in this colorway, but in this shoe. Uh, the one he was wearing was the black, white, and green one. Same color that McEnroe played in. Cult favorite, Trainer One. This is the first one we did. It is a good one. One of my all-time favorite dunks. Dunk lows anyways. This was the uh, Tokyo uh, as part of the white dunk collection. There was an art show that went along with this, but the, uh, the whole premise was that the dunk is the perfect blank canvas. And so we made an all canvas, perfectly white dunk low. EQ, the tank. So there are airbags there, there, and a full length one in the sock liner on top of being fully rubber and mesh upper. This was one of the first pair of shoes that somebody from Nike sent me right before I started working for SB. So this was uh, similar to one of the colors that Alphanumeric did. Very old pair of dunk lows that I bought uh, long before I worked for SB. I have no idea why I still have them. But I do. Shit, I can still skate in these. 
It's uh, it's definitely crazy. I mean, think about all the years, all the uh, just all the memories involved in all this. Because it's not like I mean, yeah, I've got a ton of stuff that I haven't used, but there's so many memories and like all the magazines and all these skateboards and the clothes that I wore. And it makes you appreciate what you have, the uh, the time you spent doing it, and like you know, just this love affair that we have with skating.